Welcome back to another episode of Doing Life Radio, and today we get into something that is one of my Joyce's hot topics. Yeah, today we're talking about the keto diet, something I'm really passionate about, um, something that we've been doing in our household. So we we really give a very broad spectrum of kind of what it is. This is like Keto 101. Yeah, I mean, really just kind of scratching the surface. But if you've ever been curious about what, you know, this is kind of a popular thing right now. This is a hot topic um, right there. So if you're curious about what it is and what that means, then give a listen. So listen up for the crash course. If you would be so kind as to like and rate us and share if you're listening to us take a screenshot share and tag us on instagram and we will uh, be happy to comment on that again this is doing life radio we're doing life together and here we go drum roll the keto edition here we are okay we're back and we're talking about one of the latest fads quote unquote fads that's going on out there and today we are going to focus in on the keto diet that's right we're going to put on our expert gloves yeah uh, which we are not Uh, we are not a doctor and this is an episode where quite frankly I don't know what I'm going to be able to contribute because my wife is the brains behind this in our house so why don't we just start with the simplest of all questions what is the keto diet Okay, so a keto diet is very different from a traditional diet in that a traditional diet is more so concerned about your calorie intake, but the keto diet is more concerned about what is your macronutrient intake. Macronutrient. So this right. is, I've heard of carbs, I've heard of sugars, proteins. What's macronutrients? Right. So your macronutrients break down your calories into very specific categories. So where are your calories coming from as far as fat? as far as protein, and as far as carbohydrates. So you wanna be um, just intentional about what you're eating. And obviously this is a very low carb diet, a very high fat diet. Which initially sounds delicious. It is a delicious diet, yes. So I am obviously doing the keto diet. Um, I started it some time ago. I gave it a try. I actually did like a 30 day keto with a girlfriend of mine Mm -hmm. a long time ago. And um, the weight, does come off. Now, I am not a heavy person and I didn't have a lot of weight to lose. So that's not really the intention behind it for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to lose five pounds, but I think everybody would like to lose at least five pounds, right? right? Um, But it was more of a lifestyle change for me. Um, I watched a documentary called The Magic Pill and I made my parents watch it. I encouraged you to watch it. He did not. Um, But I really highly recommend watching this documentary called The Magic Pill just to get a better idea of what the diet is. Where could they find the Oh, it's on Netflix and it's free. Netflix? Well, free if you have Netflix. It's free if you have Netflix. (laughs) Yeah. Or if you're borrowing your friend's account, which uh, tends to be happening out there. So the keto diet, we've been doing it. Would you say we started back in the fall of 2018? I would say that's probably when we. Yeah, that's probably when we, we really were like, let's. Because we were doing um, a previous like diet. He was doing more of a workout program that had a suggesting eating mm-hmm. diet. So we were doing that. And once we finished that program, I said, you know, I really have always wanted to go more to this ketogenetic lifestyle. I think we should really give it a try. So let's let's back up a little bit because you said you tried the the keto diet. Yeah. Uh, a while ago. What's a while ago? Years or? Yeah, maybe a year or two ago. Okay. So you tried this diet on your own, independent. Well, with a girlfriend of mine, we with did a girlfriend. It. But yeah. as far as our house is concerned, we didn't participate in this no. diet with you. And as we get further into the diet, you're going to find out how difficult it is to be the only person in the house yeah. doing the keto diet. Now, in our next episode, the one coming up after this, we're going to be talking about what is uh, the Soul Con Challenge, which right. you just briefly right. referenced, so we did which that was a whole ahead of time. body discipline. And we started that in April of 2018. And that was uh, the start of the change of, lo- of our lives, really, yeah. and how we... Yeah, our whole household how we took a turn. ate, how we worked out. Like It had a big, huge physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual impact yeah. on our house. And we're going to dive into all those details in the next one. But what that did is it laid the groundwork for you in the fall to say, 
this is where we're going. It gave Sam an open mind because typically if I had suggested something, especially something a little bit more extreme, he would just, you know, poo-poo it away. He doesn't want anything to do with it. But since he was already in the right frame of mind, thank you, you to Sulkan. took total Sulkan, advantage of me. I took total advantage. <laughs> I said, this is what we're doing. And you know what? Full disclosure, he probably isn't eating a keto lifestyle because you generally, you know, like you'll have something that isn't necessarily low carb, but when you're at home, you eat what I make. Right. Well, I, yeah, I, I would say I'm probably 90% there for what my knowledge is okay. of it. And that's, that's another thing there is, can you partially do keto or do you have to be all in? Because my perception is in order to get the full effects of keto, you got to be 100% keto. You got to be all in on it. So I guess to get the full effects, yes, you would have to. Um, and I know there are people who like check their blood and check their urine to see if they're actually in ketosis. I have never, ever done that because I don't care if I'm in ketosis or not. I care about, um, are my clothes fitting well? Do I feel good? Do I have energy? How do you check your blood and your, do you have to take, go into like one of those labs? No, you just buy, you buy strips at the drugstore. Yeah. So maybe one episode we'll do that and we'll see how we're doing. Yeah to pee in a cup at home stop so anyway <laughs> i don't know if i'm in ketosis and i will say i um i i will follow it very well but there are times that i don't want to so i was at a baby shower the other day um they had a phenomenal dessert bar and i was like ah, you know what i'm gonna have dessert that is not what you do on a keto diet mm -hmm. but every once in a while like i i just don't care so it's something that i try to do um generally but i'm not like a drill sergeant about it like if we're going to take our kids out for ice cream i'm going to have some ice cream right. so this is just kind of like a general rule of thumb it keeps me nicely on track um but i'm not really a drill sergeant about it i would say okay so you mentioned that it's like high in fats yes macro nutrients yes so i think people get really confused about that so the first thing i would suggest is get an app that will help you through this diet or a book or something. I like this app, it's called Carb Manager. Um, now I don't track my food every day, but at least one day a week I try to track because it just helps me be like, okay, I am doing what I should be. Or like, ooh, I didn't know this new food that I've been consuming is throwing my macronutrients way off of balance. <laughs> so it helps to keep me on track. So I'm going to be really raw with you guys and give you all my numbers and then uh, you can adjust yours accordingly so I'm about five foot eight mm -hmm. uh, this morning I weighed in at about hundred and thirty six and a half pounds so that's like my height and weight and according to my perfect macronutrients I should be eating 20 net carbs a day it sounds like a lot it's not a lot trust me <laughs> um, I should be having about hundred and twenty four grams of fat a day that is a lot wow and about 100 grams of protein a day. And that would to total for me 1,600 calories. So for my height and weight, and I'm not trying to like aggressively lose weight, maybe just a, a couple pounds here or there, that's what my macronutrients should look like. And there's this beautiful pie chart in there, and I scan my food, or if it's you know food that you can't scan, just type it in, and it, it does all the work for me. So I'll know when I'm done eating, like, okay, I you know, whatever, I ate too many um, carbs, I should have had more fat, you know, it, it helps you know where you're at and where you should be going. I do remember for a while there, you're on a, a run and every day you were right on top of it. And yeah. at the end of in the, the day, beginning, like, you, wanna, chart, you want to so track good. in the beginning because we're so used to um, eating this standard all-American diet that's high in carbs and we're always hungry that it's hard to know what you should and shouldn't be eating. Now, I'm to the point where I really, I kind of have, have got it down. I have a much on. better concept and I'm not so hungry because I'm eating fat and fat keeps you full. Mm, fat. Yeah. Now you're saying fat, but in my, I used to always think fat literally is that piece of the meat that you cut off because you don't want to have the fat. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's totally good for you. It's totally fine. Fat does not make you fat. Now, if you eat fat with carbohydrates, that makes that's you fat. Where, okay, so that's where yeah. the, it, the delineation, that's yes. where things start to break down yes. into, okay, you're not just eating this happy, fat-filled, you know, life. There's an actual... You have to, it's actually um, less about what you do eat and more about what you don't eat. And that's the carbs. You got to get rid of the carbs and the sugar. 
Um, if you eliminate those, you will naturally be eating foods that are higher in protein and then the fat comes in to keep you um, sustained, to keep you full, to keep you happy. Um, so yeah, that's basically the rundown. So how can you, does it have an impact on how you work out? Like, can you gain muscle mass through this process? Yeah. Because I know a lot of times talk about carbo loading, you know, if you're preparing right. for a race and all so, that. So I'm not an athlete. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. This is only things that I have tried on myself that have worked very nicely for me. If they don't work for you, you need to find what works for you. I am by no means telling you, you ought to do this. But I like to work out in a fasted state, meaning um, there's this term called intermittent fasting. I'm sure you've heard about it because it's a big fad right now. Um, intermittent fasting means you want to go a minimum of 12 hours a day without eating. Um, the longer, the better, but at least 12. Now, if you have a medical condition or you're taking medication, you probably can't do that. Like mm -hmm. I am by no means giving any sort of advice here. Please let me make that clear. But what you want to do, or what I want to do, is I want to finish eating for the day, maybe six, seven o'clock at the latest. Right. And then I don't want to eat again the next day until maybe eight, nine o'clock in the morning, even longer if I can. But I'm a breakfast person. I do enjoy eating breakfast. So I, I do mm -hmm. start. That's why I try to finish dinner later or earlier in the night because I like to eat by eight or nine in the morning. So we get up and we are at the gym by 630. So I haven't eaten for a full 12 hours when I start my workout. Um, and I prefer to do it that way. I like my stomach to feel empty. I like to feel like that clean inside when I work out. Some people want to get up and they want a pre-workout meal or drink. Right. If that works for you, that works for you. It does not really work so well for me. So, I mean, we're not doctors or anything like that. So you're just going based on feeling how it energizes you. And and I follow suit. I mean, I'm, I'm right with you. Before you I don't eat gym, before yeah. we go, but I run the pattern that you, that you run. So yeah. I'm kind of there. Um, and the only thing I'm having is the, my drink, you know, the, my just regular flavored beverage, uh, you know, sugar-free beverage. That's the only thing I'm having there at the gym. You're having straight water. Uh, yeah, so but I, I have noticed that when I add carbs or something like that, it does have an impact on the way I work out, but I can't quantify results on that. I don't have anything to kind of say, well, yeah. this is better than that. So there was this study done where they took these two different groups of people and, um, one group would have carbs once a day. So they were, they were both doing a keto nutrient lifestyle, but the one group was doing a heavy carb meal one, one day a week and the other one was not. Um, both groups of people lost the same amount of weight, but the ones who ate the carbs, um, they lost muscle and the ones who didn't, they lost fat. Hmm. So I found that and I was like, okay, yeah. I am on the right track. I, I, now please, I have my days where I splurge and I eat carbs, but my daily routine habit is to keep my carbs under 20 grams because I don't want to lose muscle. Right. Now we're not uh, fanatical about that. I think that's, you keep saying that all the time. Like we, 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 we enjoy life. We enjoy life. We, but we've also found that we're, we're healthier. We feel like everything about us is so much better when we pretty much commit to this certain area. And in this case, we, you've chosen the, the keto lifestyle. Yeah. And for the most part around our house, uh, we are keto in this house. Aside from our boys, they do. We, are we, a we do lenient. have that, like crackers and things in the house that are really high in carbs. Um, cereal. They like to have they cereal. Love their cereal. So they we're very in. lenient with the boys. But when it comes to dinner, I make what I make. And it's usually an extremely healthy dinner. And that's what they eat. Very keto. When we yeah. eat at, at your family's house, we we try to be very keto conscious. On yeah, my parents are really good about making sure they fix things that are within our keto lifestyle. Um, so yeah, I try to stick to the macronutrients that I already laid out for you. Now, there are some people who will see me eat something and they'll say, that's not keto. That food's not keto. <laughs> and this is my perception of keto. If it fits into my macronutrients... It's keto for me. As <laughs> long as my um, carbs stay under 20 grams that day and my fat and my protein are within where they ought to be, that's fine for me. I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, like decide if every single food is keto or not. I just want to fit into my macronutrients and I want the food that I do eat to be healthy, sustainable food that comes from actual food, actual ingredients. 
I don't want to rely on like bars and shakes that come from chemicals or man-made substances. Now we do eat some bars and we eat some shakes, but that is the exception to the rule. That's mm -hmm. when we're in a pinch, we're in a hurry. I like to grab a bar if I'm gonna eat breakfast in the car, um, but we try and find ones that are made with the best ingredients, real ingredients that come from real foods. Right. And I uh, completely lost the train of thought I was going to have. Okay. I had a great point to add on in the middle of that, and it totally went away. But I like how you, it's it's custom to you. Like it's, we're not vegans having steak for dinner. It's not that extreme right. off the off the the wall. It's uh, we there's this certain parameters we're going to try to stay within right. to. Again, understanding life, like, you know, if we're at a party, we're not, we don't want to be the sticklers in the corner saying, I can't eat that. It doesn't. No, doesn't we're not those people. No, no. Uh, we're okay to enjoy things a little bit here and there, but knowing full well that we're going to have to take a couple days to kind of recoup right. from that. Or I'll just stop eating sooner. So a few days ago we had sushi. Well, I really shouldn't be eating sushi because of all of the rice. It has a lot of mm -hmm. carbs. So we had that for lunch and I just said, okay, I'm going to start my fat, my intermittent fasting now. So I didn't have dinner that night. Um, and I didn't have breakfast till later the next morning. So I just had a longer fasting window. Now, again, you might not be able to do that. That works fantastic for me. Um, there, I'm only going to quote one more study. This is going to be fun, not boring, I promise. Okay. <laughs> so there is this study that I I found it so mind-boggling fascinating. You'll attest because I've talked to you about it like 10 times mm -hmm. because I couldn't believe how that this actually happened. But they had two groups of rats. And both sets of rats had the exact same diet. They both had the exact same foods with the exact same amount of calories and they had the exact same quantity. There was no difference in the food whatsoever. But the first group of rats ate that all throughout the day. They could eat it they had all day long. They access to the long. food all day long. 24 yes. hours they had access to that food. The second group of rats had the exact same amount, but they had it in a very small window. They had Only to eat it hours. all within mm -hmm. eight hours where the other one had the whole 24 hours. The first group were fat rats and the second were thin and muscular and they weren't eating anything different. They were eating the exact same diet in the same quantity. They were just eating it in a different time frame. So what that told me is, okay, there's something to this. Your body needs time to fully digest its food so it can go on to repair your body. Right. And that's the essence of the study is your body learns how to adapt and adjust. Yeah. If there's not always the next bite coming in, the next meal coming in, your body makes Anytime a Anytime you consume a calorie, your body um, produces insulin. So if it's constantly producing insulin, it's not constantly repairing itself. So you need to give your body a break. Again, your break might not be as long as my break. And I'm not, I do not enjoy fasting. When we did the Soul Con Challenge, and we'll talk about that in the next episode, we had to fast for 24 hours. And then there was another instance where we fasted for 24 hours. Uh, that's not my ideal. I hate that actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy it. Um, it just doesn't work nicely for me. But intermittent fasting, I can't tell you the benefits of it. I really enjoy it because even if you get a little bit off track, you can just extend your fasting window a little bit and it, it can kind of help you out a little bit. Yeah, I've tried doing You're that. You're not a huge fan of the intermittent because he, he's a nighttime of, snack kind correct. of guy. And I, I'm trying to be more conscious of that. Like yeah. it used to be like every evening I'm having a snack and my snack would be keto approved cheese and, cheese and meat for yeah. the most part. So I was getting away with it there, but I, I'm trying to be more conscious of it, especially as you're starting to be, make yourself more uh, prom You're making it more prominent. I don't want it in, near me. Right if here, he's right. eating meat and cheese on the couch after my um, window of eating is done, I don't even want to sit next to him because sometimes you don't even think about it. You just mindlessly mm -hmm. grab a piece of meat and you're and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be eating. It's past the time. And so I won't even sit next to him if he's having a snack. So this uh, we went into this talk with the goal of talking just about keto and now the intermittent fasting has come in, which but is... But they kind of go hand in hand. Correct. Almost what... everyone who does keto does an intermittent fasting as well. Not everyone. It's totally optional. And they, they're, they are separate. So you don't don't have to do keto and you can do intermittent fasting and you can do keto without doing intermittent fasting i find they work beautifully together because mm -hmm. you're not as hungry because of all of the fat right so if you have a different diet plan or a different um or you're just trying to slowly work into it one of the easiest things to start is that intermittent fasting because most of that fast that you're starting is your sleep time start yes. with eight hours then creep up to nine hours like do a, a gradual progression up to this 12, and some of the extreme ones are like 16, 17 hours of yeah, intermittent I'm not, fasting. Yeah, I'm We're probably not, not going to get to the point where I'm 18 hours fasted because I 
I, like I said, I, I want to enjoy life and I want to enjoy my food and I don't want to, you know, mm-hmm. I don't want to be a drill sergeant that way. But um, to do a 12 hour fast, that's a piece of cake. I mean, you stop eating a few hours before bed and then you're sleeping a good eight Can hours. Can we not talk about cake when All we right, talk yeah. about this? At least you should be. You sh- really, really should be um, sleeping a minimum of eight hours a night. And I'm a big stickler on sleep. <laughs> you, I can tell the difference if you had seven and a half hours versus eight hours. I would minute. rather, <laughs> um, skip the gym to make sure I sleep my full eight hours. It's that important. And, and if there's that, value in that. There is yeah, a from, lot of value in getting like you're having a good sleep cycle yeah. is almost as important as going to the gym. I mean, it is yeah. really right there. So sleep is another huge element. Yeah, I don't function well. If the TV's on after ten o'clock, I am mad at or well, he now plugs in headphones to watch TV so I don't have to hear it because at ten o'clock I want to be asleep. At least 10 o'clock, yeah. Yeah, that's my late time. That's the dead time. And that's another transition that we have both made. Yeah. Uh, we used to have this, uh, like 11 o'clock was our quote-unquote bedtime. We're starting to transition that. Trying that to get earlier and earlier. Closer to 9.30. But we also want to see each other. And sometimes the, the way, just the way the house runs and our activities. Yeah, that's our time together. Work, the kids go to bed. We watch that's our sitcoms. That's time together. We sit down, relax. laugh, we talk, and uh, that's kind yeah. of our, our time. But... Yeah, sleep is crazy important, especially when your body's like like for me, I'm right now I'm into building muscle, muscle yeah. mass, and I'm trying to get myself more uh, in that category. And like I've I've done the weight loss, like my body I think is is you know again I could probably lose five ten pounds or just, I I can't do the cardio right now because my foot my poor poor foot it's just a sign of getting old. Uh, but you need the sleep to rebuild. Uh, yes. rebuild the muscle so that's a big element yeah i would say um for me the most important things you can do for your physical health would be find a good clean diet that works for you for me it's a keto diet get a minimum of eight hours sleep more if you can i know if you've got young children that's not always possible but you know if you can you can and then last but not least, water intake. You want to drink as much water as you can, at least eight ounce, eight, eight ounce glasses a day, but that's the minimum amount. And then don't be afraid to put salt on your food because if you're intaking a whole lot of water every day, you're depleting yourself um, of some of the minerals. So um, don't be afraid to take some supplements. Don't be afraid to take some salt. Um, we're not huge on supplements. We take some. We'll, we'll do a whole separate episode on supplements because that's a whole different... Um, ball game and yeah. things to get into, but I'm I'm a very purist, very minimalist. I drink water plain. I don't put anything in it. I know he likes to put an un a sugar free right. like flavor in yeah, his I, water. I can't do just straight water all the time. I I'm trying to be more conscious of what I drink. I have yeah. one of those huge bottles. I try to make sure at least I finish that. That's like 40 ounces. Yeah. So I try to finish that in a day. Plus add things. Uh, now I used to be a heavy heavy pop drinker. I used yeah. to drink Pepsi like crazy. I've since gone uh, away from that. Yeah, we're totally um, soda-free in our house. Mm -hmm. But we did find a really fantastic substitute for soda. Um, It's called Sparkling Ice. Now, this is one of those things where we'd like to think that we're sponsored by them. We are not sponsored. We are just talking about it because it really is a delicious substitute for soda. I don't drink them too often because, like I said, I tend, I want to be, like, more of a minimalist with what I'm putting in my body. So I just want to put water as far as a beverage in my body. Yeah, and I like flavor. I like the bubbly. This kind of throws me back. It's it's basically flavored carbonated water. There's 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 no no sugars. And there's no, no carbs. Yeah, so it's a pretty safe drink. Now I go yeah. and I binge these things. So I'll have like two or three at a time, which probably isn't great. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Uh, but no, this is one of the things that we definitely. So these are sparkling ice, and anything we mention, we'll put in the comment section so you'll be able to follow through. Yeah. Uh, this our friends Justin and Ruth told us. Yeah, have you ever tried these things? And whew. yeah, they're really delicious. They taste just like soda. The grape one tastes just like grape soda yes it does um so i usually get them in these big multi-packs from bj's and there is a flavor or two that he doesn't care for that i actually like so i'll just kind of randomly if i'm gonna have one i'll grab one that i know he doesn't like because he drinks them like water and i drink them like treats (laughs) yeah i enjoy it so what else i mean we brought some other snacks that we can we can share again we're not like we're not yeah we're not sponsored by any of these people these are just kind of some of the things we eat but i do want to talk about first because i think it's important to talk um about quantity because people think with keto they're like oh you eat the keto diet you have bulletproof coffee and all the bacon you can eat and i'm like no no i can have bulletproof coffee and i can have bacon but 
like I said, in my perfect um, macronutrients, I can only have 1600 calories a day. So if I'm eating an entire pound of bacon, I'm done. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's this false conception that as long as you're eating low carb, you can eat as much as you want. And that's absurd. I mean, nobody should be stuffing themselves with an obscene amount of food. Right. Um, so I thought we would talk briefly about bulletproof coffee because uh, when you hear keto, you hear about hand bulletproof hand, right? coffee. They go hand, hand in hand. We're coffee drinkers. We, yeah, I love we coffee. I'm big, big coffee drinker. So one of the changes I had to make in my coffee changes, and we'll talk about in the next episode, I used to be heavy cream. Yeah. Well, it used to be it used to be sugar, plain cream. Then I discovered flavored cream. So then I went to that, and I still put sugar in my coffee. Then I yeah, realized, terrible. oh, there's sugar and flavored cream. So why not just add a little more flavored cream to it? And then major, major change last year where I had to go for six weeks to drink in just black coffee. Mm-hmm. Made that switch over. So now I really crave like the actual coffee taste. And when you do something like that, you have to get good coffee. You yeah. can't just. I'm not going to name any names, but you can't just buy the low end one off the shelf. You have yeah. to invest in You've good, gotta get good coffee because coffee, you got to have some good beans in there. Uh, and now we've done, there's little sugar free flavor things mm-hmm. that we kind of add just to kind of spice up the coffee a little bit. So, bulletproof coffee, I know you really like this. So, I love bulletproof Correct. coffee. You love. But that being said, I don't drink bulletproof coffee. I will drink. Maybe once a week or something, I'll Maybe treat myself that, to yeah, bulletproof do coffee. Much. But it I, takes more work than what we. It takes more work. Have you have to get out the blender or the um. You know, we have the magic bullet, so it's not just you know fixing a quick cup of coffee. But it is like this delicious, frothy latte. It is like hopes and dreams in your coffee. It's so good. Um, he's <laughs> taken a couple sips of mine here and there, but today in preparation for the show, I actually made him a bulletproof coffee. So tell us what your thoughts are. So you're sitting there and you have your, your coffee cup and you're holding it and it's you like are just, yeah, you have this smile and this look on your face that I haven't seen since we got married. You're just in a <laughs> very happy, happy place. And you hand me just a little bit of sample. Now, to look at it, it doesn't look like coffee. It, there is this It looks like a latte, top. right? It does look like a latte. Now, I'm a full-grown man with a full-grown beard. Lattes are not in my wheelhouse. It's not something I do. It's not something I partake in. So you hand this thing to me, and I'm drinking this for the show. Yeah. This is why I'm going after it. And I drink it, and the wave of nothingness... Yeah, he me. wasn't super impressed. I, was not, well, I didn't feel But like it wasn't bad, of, right? No, I'm not saying it was bad, but I'm also not saying I can't wait to have my next one. Yeah. To me, it didn't have enough flavor, didn't have enough kick. Maybe the coffee needed to be stronger. Yeah, so I do not enjoy black coffee. I have to have some cream in my coffee. Um, I put in a little bit of a sugar-free sweetener. So I probably really shouldn't be drinking coffee because I don't enjoy black coffee. <laughs> um, but Bulletproof coffee it is delicious if you are more of like a latte drinker so let me explain to you what it is with bulletproof coffee you add black coffee you add in a fat so either a coconut oil we use um mct oil which is a medium chain triglyceride oil um big words so today in my bulletproof coffee i had the coffee i had the mct oil i had a little bit of heavy whipping cream and just a pinch of um jordan sugar-free sweetener Um, So there's no sugar in it. There's no artificial nonsense in it, um, but it just adds a little bit of sweetness. Or you could put in a stevia. Monk fruit is a delicious one. I thought bullet coffee is when they take the big chunk of butter and they throw it in. Oh, some people do butter. So whatever fat you want to use, you're going to blend in. So some people use like a grass-fed clean butter. Some people use ghee. Um, Coconut oil is popular. MCT oil is probably the most highly recommended form of fat to put in it. And then you blend it together because if you just put fat and coffee in, it gets chunky and like oily looking and weird. Um, But as soon as you blend the two together, it turns into this magical frothy substance. It was frothy. Yeah, I'll give you that. It's so good. It's so (laughs) smooth. And to give you a little bit TMI, you will have the best bowel movement if you have bulletproof coffee the best because coffee already is a diuretic correct and then you're putting that that in it that gets everything moving and i am telling you after a big cup of bulletproof coffee you feel so empty and cleaned out from the inside out it is the best like you feel like hollow inside so full disclosure i had a couple sips what am i looking forward to this afternoon oh you're fine you had a couple sips okay 
You probably had 10 cups of coffee. Don't blame the bulletproof for whatever goes down in the bathroom. <laughs> I want it to be the best, number two. Yeah, it is magical. But um, <laughs> So if it's so wonderful, why do I not drink bulletproof coffee? And the answer is there is a heck of a lot of calories in bulletproof coffee. If you're putting in butter or oil and all this fat into your coffee. It's going to throw off your pie chart, right? You've turned it into a meal. So if you're having bulletproof coffee, there's nothing wrong with it. It's very delicious and it's super healthy, but it's going to make you gain weight. So some people do the keto diet to gain weight in a healthy manner. You can have bulletproof coffee and a big breakfast. Great. Good for you. We cannot. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to have a bulletproof coffee, that is my breakfast. And that's totally um, sustainable. It keeps you satisfied. I just am a foodie. I like to eat. I right. don't want, I mean, occasionally I'll have that for breakfast or I'll have a protein shake for breakfast. And like you, when you cook food, you cook for me too. Like that's yeah, well, we a really cook together. nice thing. So we don't cook together. No, I mean, you I cook, cook for, for us. us. So you know that if you're making the bulletproof coffee. It's already been proven. That's not my cup of tea. Yeah. Pun intended. Yeah, it's okay. not even tea. So, uh, so just I think another element to that is because of your pure love for me. I mean, I'm a good person. Feeding me. Yeah. <laughs> you, if you make bulletproof coffee and I'm at home, it means I'm not getting. Yeah. Breakfast. So if we both happen to be home in the morning, which a couple days a week we are, um, we just our schedules do work out nicely that we can come home from the gym. And um, um, I'll whip us up some bacon and eggs or some sausage and eggs, something like that. Um, I would say eggs are a huge staple in our diet. Yeah. We oh, eat yeah. eggs for All breakfast, um, I would say, four days a week, easily. And side note, we have those little egg machines sitting in our backyard. They just make eggs all the time. Chickens. We have chickens. We have chickens. They poop our breakfast every morning. Alrighty. So yeah, we make <laughs> eggs for breakfast a lot. Also, I make deviled eggs and we, we take them for lunch. Um, yeah. a whole heck of a lot. So I just use the egg yolk. I use a mayonnaise that's an avocado oil base because you you don't want to have so much soap soybean oil when you're doing keto. Um, you want to you know always have very you want to have the most nutritious fat possible because of the amount of fat you're eating. So again avocado based oil, um, mayonnaise and I just whip those two together, a little bit of seasoning, a little paprika on top and that is it. We do not add nonsense ingredients we don't want sugar none of that it's very clean so we have deviled eggs a lot we have um runny eggs almost every morning um for lunch i would say we we usually take the deviled eggs and i love to make these it's um salami and then i add cream cheese in the middle and roll them up these little like roll-ups with salami they and cream cheese they are so good they really are so good <laughs> it's so, a little bit of work on them but uh, yeah, it's quick sometimes i won't even roll them up i'll just pack myself a block of cream cheese and some salami and fix them, them as i go because <laughs> time um, another one we do a lot is um, celery, and I'll either put cream cheese or like a nut butter on top of that. Mm -hmm. That's one I take for lunch a lot. And then leftovers. We do leftovers for lunch a lot. Yeah, you definitely do leftovers for yeah. lunch a lot more than I do. You'll pack up the, the evening's meal. I'll for have the it all ready for the next day. Yeah. And if you forget it, and I get to it, and I'm like, yes, I, she forgot yeah. it, and now I'm going to have lunch. And then you get home. I'm like, and... where is my food? <laughs> yeah. yeah, then so I'm trying to be a little more yeah. conscious and of that. And cheese sticks. I bring cheese sticks for lunch a lot. Like the, um, you know, what are those like mozzarella cheese sticks that you... A little poly string cheese? I Yeah, but the ones <laughs> that I like, it's mozzarella and cheddar together okay. in the same They're stick. They're like in a twist, right? I the, love like the braided, those. I've actually had them hidden in the fridge because I don't like when other people eat them. They're so delicious. They're for me. I, I know when they're in a certain location, I'm not going to touch them. <laughs> They're my <laughs> special snack. That. So uh, we got some snacks over here that yeah. are... Yeah, so we'll go over some of our snacks that we kind of enjoy and then... Um, I have a fun recipe to share with you guys yes. before we close out because we have a meal in our house that we eat easily, probably once a week. Easy, I make least. cauliflower mac and cheese with a steak. That's probably our favorite meal. Yeah. All four of us enjoy it. The cauliflower mac and cheese, it's like you can have this huge bowl of comfort food. It's mm -hmm. so delicious. Um, so before we leave, I'm going to end with giving you the recipe to that and we'll put that in the show notes as yeah. well. Um, I would love to know how you guys make out with it. It's Probably our favorite side dish. Right now, yeah. As far as yeah. keto foods are concerned, now it it's called uh, what is called cauliflower mac and cauliflower cheese. Cauliflower mac and cheese. But there's uh, no mac. There's no, no mac. pasta. 
it was cauliflower and cheese. Yeah. And you're talking to a guy who's a big fan of mashed potatoes and everything. This has kind of taken over that in yeah. my life. So what do we got going on over here? Okay. So we already talked to you about the sparkling ice. We love that so much. Yep. Um, I actually have something for Sam to try because he huh. hasn't tried this yet. Um, this is by f bomb it's a fat bomb so this is for like just you need a quick um snack and maybe you need something high in fat i love how they um they market this it says not low fat not even a little like this is clearly <laughs> nothing but fat in here and i love that it's very clean there aren't a lot of ingredients so this is dry roasted macadamia nuts it's organic dark chocolate and it's sea salt so that's basically it what you it comes in these like individual packets looks like you would and, like, um, kind of similar to the packet that you would give like a little kid has with apple sauce yeah like the little snack the little pack. One, so you just rip it off the lid so you, and squeeze yeah, it in that's exactly what you do so um if you can't see me i'm kind of kneading it together but be because it's a nut butter and a fat they kind of start to separate so you want to kind of just smush them together um before you open it so you don't get like a big like glop of oil in your mouth oh, you want to have doing this for yeah. me and not um and then you just rip open the top and you suck it out like kind of like an applesauce and it is so delicious i keep these at my station at work and if i'm between clients and i can hear that little like rumble in my stomach this is a perfect <laughs> like satisfying little snack instead of like in years past or you know recently before i started keto i would just run into the front room where the guests walk in and grab a cookie like that would be my quick little let me just grab a cookie before i can get to lunch and you know how much sugar and calories are we doing if we grab three four cookies during a shift so this is a, such a better solution so we're gonna have you give that a whirl okay so and these um you can get right from gnc the uh, packaging's cool. It says it does say F bomb on it, and it looks yeah, like that's a bomb. A weird. It's pretty yeah, it looks cool. like yeah. a bomb. Yeah, it coming from a very conservative and our Christian. Yeah, background, I mean it's it's kind of a weird. As a matter of fact, if you get them online, it's the website is dropandfbomb.com. <laughs> I mean, whatever, it's oh, fine. fine. Okay, so but, yeah, give before it a I even uh, throw this in, let me see if I can try to describe what the texture looks like. So I mean, it's a nut butter. Yeah, but it's not. There's more. Uh, it's juicier than. Well, maybe than, I uh, didn't mix it so well because it's really just nut butter. You're fine. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna give it a shot. Nut butter, salted chocolate macadamia nut. The salted chocolate macadamia nut. It's delicious. Mm. Um, there's also a macadamia and pecan one that I, I'm like over the moon about. It's so. It's like eating pie crust. It's good. It's so good, right? It's really good. It's all over my mouth and. Yeah, man, yeah, that is. Is that like not a knockout snack? Wow, I've seen these things sitting in the cabinet for the longest time, but I haven't touched them. Well, so, now I'm gonna have to hide them. Uh, yeah, now you're gonna be in trouble. Yeah. Wow, that was really, really, really good. To be honest, it didn't taste a whole lot of the chocolate. No. But, um, yeah, you really don't. But it, it's sweet. Yeah. No, this is this is some really good stuff. So you just keep sucking on the back. So now I feel like I want to rip this thing open and just lick it. I, yeah, you can never get enough out of it. I'm always trying to like Which force really, every little last. Most drop of the things you try to feed me, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. I can deal with it. This one. That's a win, right? My goodness, I think yeah. we need to. So that company um, does, I believe, all keto and paleo approved foods. Um, they also have these like little cheddar um, bites. We tried these. Both of us have already tried them in the buffalo flavor, and they were not a win. They were gross. They were so salty, right? Okay. Remember we tried them at my parents? I don't know, I'm still dealing with the thing. Yeah, no, they were like uh, like dried up cheese crackers is what it seemed like. Yeah, that's all it is. It's cheese that they baked, but the buffalo ones salty. were so highly recommended that I bought two packs and they were disgusting. So unless you have a love affair with salt, they didn't taste like buffalo at all. Mm -mm. Um, but these ones, they're just the plain cheddar. It's called Keto Crunch by F-Bomb. Those are very nice. It's, it kind of makes you feel like you're eating a cracker because it's crunchy. And I think it's really just cheddar. Is that the only ingredient? Yeah, pretty much. It's milk, a salt. You know, it's basically the ingredients you would use to make cheese. All right, so um, we're going to open this up and try You're going to give that a whirl? Okay. Well, yeah, I tried the buffalo chicken. Yeah, the, Again, I am a huge they buffalo. They were I love not buffalo good. Flavor. Mm -mm. That was not great. So to look at it, it looks like uh, it looks like a little kid's art project, like if he was making the moon. Yeah, it looks moon. like a moon. Oh, goodness, almost dropped it. So, yeah, it does look like a moon. It's a little cracker size. I don't know, smaller than a Ritz, right? Yeah. Something like that. And uh, they're crunchy. Yeah, it gives you that satisfying feeling of like I'm eating chips or I'm eating crackers. Yeah, this one's a lot better than the Yeah, it's a little softer. One. It doesn't have that high salt. Still get a little salt. 
Yeah, and there's but, other brands that we've tried. Um, there's a brand at Trader Joe's that we really enjoy. Um, I don't know what the brand name is, but I think it's the only one that Trader Joe's sells. Okay. Um, but these these are totally delicious. I, I really like these. I did not like the buffalo ones, So they're though. called Keto Crunch, and this one is a cheddar high-fat yeah. cheese crisp. Yeah, these are good. You guys yeah. give those a shout. Um, I'm still loving the, uh, the F-bombs here. I know. My they goodness. are. They're, they're delicious. And as a conservative little Christian boy, being able to say F bomb. Stop. And not, okay. Yeah, okay. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Um, so one of the things that I don't I don't know that this would be called keto. So don't you know put your pitchforks down if you're a hardcore keto. <laughs> but I do enjoy when I'm on the run a Quest bar. Yes. Quest bars we These find them very delicious. Them. Um, this one only has five net carbs, two grams of sugar, 15 grams of fiber. So it's going to fit perfectly fine into my macronutrients when I put it in my app. Um, it's a pretty decent size bar. Like it's it's sustainable. Yeah, like I, it's, I had the uh, weight the, to there's it. There's a chocolate chip one. I had the chocolate chip flavored one for lunch today. So yeah, that's, uh, these these are great. The Quest bars. There's yeah, a they come in lots of flavors. flavors. Um, now I only like the true Quest bars. You get some other Quest bars that are like Quest protein. Oh, there's a. Uh, I didn't. I only grabbed them a couple times to try to try them yeah. out. Like protein bars being. Yeah, I don't do any of that. None of those really work well with my. Um, macronutrients so just the plain old quests that's it right um my favorites are the blueberry muffin and um the s'mores those two rock my world what do you like uh love the s'mores they have oreo cookie that's oh yeah the oreo one. one. Oh, no it's cookies and cream cookies and cream yeah Sorry. that one's really delicious Oreo's a brand name so yeah cookies and cream is my favorite the chocolate chip cookie one is uh probably my second favorite one and then the s'mores is my third now all these things like are del delicious independent of the keto diet somehow they they've able to wrap this flavor into this little bar yeah and they're great i mean what i do like about them too is you know they have the great pictures on the front when you open the bar the bar doesn't necessarily look like it like you you know in your head what a cookies and cream thing is supposed to look yeah. like um so that to me says they're less concerned about what it looks like and more concerned about the, the what's going into yeah. it being so they're okay i mean they're they're probably not the top of the line ideal breakfast but if i'm on the road and i need to grab something quick to eat in the car it's going to be a quest bar i actually um like these particular ones i ordered in a big bulk box from amazon because we do eat them so if i see them on sale or on like a lightning deal mm -hmm. i just snag them up yeah so this is a nice little yeah. what else we got right okay over there? um i did grab whipping um heavy whipping cream because this is a huge staple a major in staple um in many now. keto eaters there are some people who like to be dairy free because dairy can cause a lot of inflammation um if you are dairy free good for you i wish i were but i have a love affair with dairy mm. So I do use heavy whipping cream in my coffee when I'm not doing bulletproof coffee, coffee because there are um, very little carbs. It's usually less than one gram of carb, and you can have a, you know a good tablespoon. So I'll I'll pop this in my um, coffee, or I will actually whip the cream and put in a little bit of stevia, and then we have whipped cream that you can have like <laughs> some blueberries with or something She'll like that. She'll come out. It's about this little bowl she'll get all cuddled up on the couch this yeah. bowl just this whipping all this whipped cream couple of she'll berries spend, on top it doesn't take too long to make it no so here's the machine going and then you just come out you got a little smile on your face you got oh, a little I cream just love and a couple it so much or if you up. are lucky enough to have lily's chocolate chips on hand they're chocolate chips with no sugar it's um i think stevia sweetened um those are fantastic lily's, you said lily's chocolate? lily's chocolate chips with a little bit just sprinkle them over top of your whipped cream sometimes i may i, I don't do a whole lot of fruit very 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 little fruit but if i do it's going to be a couple little strawberries or blueberries right on top of my whipped cream and that is like such a phenomenal snack nice and yeah one more little uh... i have one more i saved the best for last i actually have so many things i would love to share with you guys so if you are loving this episode and you want to hear more about the keto lifestyle please let us know because yeah. i really tried to just like let me just give you like some broad spectrum facts but i would really love to get into more of what i eat and why and what i look for and what i avoid um again but i don't know if that's what you guys right, want so let us know you, this is the um, intro to so keto. this is just a very broad spectrum but my favorite 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 thing and i have yep. to thank my friend chris for bringing this to my attention um 
This is by the Diabetic Kitchen, and they have a ton of products. I haven't tried them, but now I'm going to because <laughs> this is a granola, and it's the most cr delicious granola I've ever had in my life. And I love granola even before keto. I loved granola. There was this specific one that I always got, but man, when I really started looking at the sugar and the carb content, I'll never touch it again. Um, but this is even better than that. It's called Cinnamon Pecan Granola Cereal by the Diabetic Kitchen. And I just want to go over with you. It only had, okay. So I want to quickly, very, very quickly explain to you how to read the um, carbs on a nutrition label because it can be a little tricky. So this says for the serving that it's eight grams of carbs, okay? Now, mind you, I can only have 20 a day, so eight would be a lot. But it has five grams of fiber. So five of those grams of carbs are coming from fiber and you don't have to count those. So you subtract the fiber. So eight grams of carbs minus five grams of fiber equals three grams of carbs per serving. You thought you weren't going to get any math yeah. in this. We're dropping some oh, math bombs on I, you. I've got another one. Here we but go. Yeah, this is, so this is a really delicious, delicious cereal. I will either um, pair it with um, coconut milk because that's delicious and almost carb-free, um, full of fat. It's delicious breakfast. Or you can get unsweetened um, Greek yogurt. I think that has two grams of carbs. So you can have this big bowl of yogurt with the granola in it for five grams of carbs. And oh, I just love yogurt <laughs> and granola. It's so delicious. The other um, yogurt I would get, it's called Too Good. And um, I think maybe you'll play makes it, but I'm not positive. But it's called Too Good, T W O, and they call it that because there's only two grams of sugar in it. But I do believe there's three grams of carbs in that one, but it comes in flavors like blueberry, peach, you know, whatever. Is that the one that has like the coconut base to it? No, that's okay. Tadden's yogurt. Yeah, yeah um, I don't touch that. So, yeah, that one, I love to get like the peach yogurt and put the granola in it and mix it all up. That is like my all time favorite breakfast. It is so delicious. So, I can, if everything we've talked about today, this granola is my favorite. <laughs> favorite i love it so very much but yeah real quick while we're talking about how to check your um carbs so i already mentioned you can subtract the fiber but also if it has erythritol which is an all-natural sweetener that's also a source of carbs that you don't have to count so for instance this um quest bar it says it has 22 grams of carbs Whoa. but then you get to deduct the 15 from fiber and the two from erythritol what? and that's why they're saying that there's only five net carbs so i know that can be confusing i hope i cleared cleared that up for you because <laughs> that really confused me for a long time i would be like i don't understand it's saying five carbs but when i look at the back it's saying that there's 22 carbs and i i wasn't wrapping my head around it so i hope that if that was a problem for you as well um that you you kind of got that cleared up there's good carbs there's bad carbs there's healthy carbs there's Unhealthy yeah, well, carbs, there's ones you should count and there's ones you don't have to count. Correct. So that's it. Okay. We're so. Dropping science here. This is great. Science. <laughs> okay. So that's basically, in a nutshell, what the keto diet is. Like I said, like I QVC feel like I have so. I'm very passionate about it because I feel like it works and it works quickly and it works well and you remain very healthy. Um, I know that there's a whole counterculture that thinks that keto is the devil. That's fine. You don't have to send me your hate mail. Like, I understand that not everyone likes it mm -hmm. and that it isn't for everyone. I don't think anything is for every everyone no. except for Jesus. He's for everyone. <laughs> but that's it. Everything else, you know, like, you have to decide what's for you. Maybe you have a high-carb diet that works fantastic for you. That's great. You know, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, and you've experimented with some, a few different diets in, in your life. I have, and you've yeah. been down the road. And so this one I just enjoy. Don't be afraid to try it. But if you try a diet you got to commit to it and you got to yeah. commit to it for a time frame maybe it's six weeks maybe it's eight weeks but you got to give it a go so your body can recycle itself or set itself up in our case keto is working right yeah. now keto is working for yeah, us and if and, and if it doesn't it. then we'll try something different right but anyway so let's finish by giving them our all-time favorite dinner crock pot mac and cheese yeah so we steak. love to pair this with a steak and we like our steak nice and rare in the middle yep. and i love to fry it up in either butter or ghee um or if it's a nice day he'll put it out on the grill that's best, really the best win. is on the grill yeah with that's a little bit win. of seasoned salt on it and that's the yeah. way to go um and you know, I know meat can be expensive, but we do try to get good grass-fed, high-quality beef because when you're eating really fatty cuts of meat, 
um, all of the bad things like the antibiotics and, you know, all the nonsense, like your um, cows shouldn't be eating antibiotics. They shouldn't be eating corn. They shouldn't be eating meal. They should be eating grass and they shouldn't be getting chemicals injected into them because when they do, that all gets into the fat. That all, the fat is like the most toxic part of the animal, but that's the part that sustains us that we want to be eating. Science. So it gets to be tricky. Um, so if we drop money on food, it tends to be on meat. Mm -hmm. So I would highly recommend if you're eating high fat cuts of meat, which we are, to really try and get um, grass fed high quality meat. That's my PSA there. Okay. <laughs> and then for our side dish, um, it is the crock you pot side mac dish, and dip. But we make so Jeez. much of this. This is like the main we course. We do. And yeah. A lot of times I'll just it. throw the meat in the crock pot with it and we just have like a big like casserole. It's so good. Like what we call it, our, like our Philly, Philly steak. And yeah. Like, like if I get bowl. like Philly, like thin cut Philly, um, like what you used to make steakums out of, mm -hmm. that sort of meat, um, that thin steak, I'll fry that up. Oh, maybe we put some onions or something in it and throw it right in the crock pot and it's it's, it's so good. Yeah. So yeah. Good. Okay. This so diet so, will not leave you for lacking of delicious food. You need a crock pot and yeah. cauliflower. That's the right. first two things. So you're you going to get your crock pot out and you're going to spray it with a cooking spray so that it doesn't stick to the crock pot, right? Um, I'm going to give you the way I do it. I always use two heads of cauliflower and there's only four of us because it, it you will eat a lot of it it is so delicious mm -hmm. and if you have leftovers that will make you so happy so just if you have do yourself a really favor good. and don't do one head of cauliflower get two heads of cauliflower if you're gonna do it go just all do it we used to start with one head of cauliflower oh, and nope. no that's not a good idea a um, bunch of hangry boys at the end of that yeah <laughs> so you're going to take your cauliflower and you're going to break it up into little bite-sized pieces i find it best to actually break it up um, rather than use a knife because it tends to make a mess if you use a knife and you get smaller it's pieces. You don't like break it up with your hands. Break it up with your hands apart. if you can. But whatever. Bite-sized pieces. Throw it all in the crock pot. You want to throw in about a half a stick of butter, which I think is a quarter cup of butter, and then your entire block of cream cheese, which is eight ounces. Um, so all of that goes in. Any seasoning that you like, salt, pepper, whatever. I hate pepper, but I love to do salt. Sometimes if I have garlic in the fridge, I'll throw in a ton of garlic or there's this garlic salt grinder from Trader Joe's that I'm obsessed yes, with. I'll put is. a ton of that in. Yeah. So whatever seasoning you like, throw that in, throw the lid on. Um, you can cook it on high for two to three hours or low for like four to five hours. We like ours a little bit on the soft side, yep. not so soft that it turns into mashed cauliflower because I've done that a few times mm -hmm. by mistake, um, but we don't Still like it to be terrible. too crunchy. We like it to be pretty tender. So that's, you know, up to you. We kind of play with the timing based on when we're eating dinner. <laughs> okay, so once your um, couple of hours are up, and throughout the time, you know, give it a good stir here and there. Our kids know if they pass the crock pot, like, open the lid, give it a little stir, put the spoon back down. Yep. And then you want to put in um, whatever cheese you like. Um, since cauliflower can be a little bland, I always recommend using something that has a little zing to it. So if you're going to do cheddar, do like a nice sharp cheddar. Mm -hmm. We tend to do pepper jack when we do this because we just like that extra kick of flavor yeah. in it. Um, so whatever cheese you like, if you like more mild cheese, totally fine. Pop in cheese. I'm not even going to give you an amount because we like to put in a lot of cheese. Like I will literally put in the entire block of cheese. You can get shredded cheese as well, but I don't, I don't really play that game too much. I just get a block of cheese and I'll cut it up and throw it in the crock pot. Let that sit in about 30 minutes, stir it all in. Like you want it to be cheesy and oozy yeah. and gooey, and then it's ready to roll. Pop it on the table. You're ready to eat. It's so delicious. I can't wait to hear how you guys like it. We're going to throw the recipe into uh, the description section yeah. of this, so you'll be able to see that. And uh, if you have any questions on how to put it together, any other tips, don't be afraid to ask Joyce. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so we would love to share some more recipes with you guys, but we need to know if that's what you want. Right. So it's Doing Life Radio with a purpose because we want to hear from you. We're doing life with you. We're sharing our lives with you. Today we talked a little bit keto. We talked intermittent fasting. And we're excited to share these things with you. But if you would be so kind as to comment, let us know if maybe you're on the keto diet. What do you like? What's your go-to snack? What's your go-to meal? Let yeah. us know. Let's uh, let's grow this thing uh, together. If you have any more questions on the diet, you can email us at doingliferadio at gmail.com. You can find us on our website at doingliferadio.com. Uh, and uh, let's continue in this conversation. Any last-minute uh, keto facts or tips on the way out? 
No, just, you know, keto on. <laughs> keto on. Again, we are not doctors, we are not experts, but we sure as well will talk to you like we are, and we're excited to do that. Thanks for listening to us today.